Hello and welcome back to episode 15 where we're going to talk about recording grand pianos. This morning I took a trip out to see my good friend Grant who's got a lovely Yamaha Grand at home and I decided that what we would do is find a piece of music and then record it with a range of microphones in different positions. I thought the idea that we've been using here of having a comparison microphone that we keep coming back to, so it's a reference of some kind that makes sense, would be a good thing to try and replicate. So I set up a pair of AKG 414s set to figure of eight, 90 degrees apart, so a typical Blumlin stereo type of uh, setup, but realistically not one that you'd want to use in someone's house. Uh, they sound wonderful in cathedrals, churches, concert halls and things like that. But they do tend to sound a bit false in an ordinary home that's got hard walls, hard ceiling and a carpeted floor. But I figured it would be something to judge a close mic technique against. So what I've done is set up the 414s uh, about two metres away from the piano and keep switching back to those so we can listen to the comparison microphones that I've actually put much closer. One of the things you always notice when people try and record a grand piano in a less than ideal space is that they can sound very distant and boxy. And I wanted to try and avoid that if I possibly could. So I picked a pair of AKG C451s and the pair of uh, Samsung CO2s. So we've got microphones at both ends of the scale again. And they're both quite versatile, small diaphragm condensers. Now, one of the weird things about grand pianos is that there isn't really a treble side and a bass side. Now, everyone always assumes that the long strings on the pianist's left hand side are the bass strings, and that's where the bass comes from. And the shorter strings on the pianist's right hand side, the treble strings, are where all the treble comes from. Now, everyone forgets that the piano has a soundboard that runs directly underneath all of the strings. So in actual fact, where you point the microphone at is nowhere near as critical as you tend to think it will be. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to include a little section where we just do a little test by moving the microphone about all over the place. And you can hear the tonal changes that happen when we move the mic position. And it's nowhere near as obvious as you think it's going to be. So what have we got? We've got uh, a couple of small diaphragm condensers and we've got them mounted uh, around about six inches, about that far from the strings, but pointed slightly across so they both capture a little bit wider area than we perhaps give them credit for. Now we've got two different price microphones. So are we going to expect a huge difference in the sound or is it going to be something a bit more subtle as it has been in many of the other videos that we've done? Um, I suspect this is another one of those videos where the results are not quite what we'll expect. So anyway, what we're going to do is listen to the 414s then switch to the 451s and then we'll switch to the CO2s and then we're going to switch to a VSTI. Uh, in actual fact it's a Piano Tech piano simulation. Uh, it's Piano Tech 6 and it's set to a Steinway sound. And so what I've got Grant to do is play the same piece of music multiple times so I could swap the microphones around and I've basically blended the same sections of the music together so you can hear 451 followed by CO2 followed by the piano tech then back to the more distant 414s and then we cycle through over and over and over again and when we get to the end because it's got a very nice decay on the end I've repeated the last section with each microphone and the simulation at the end to give you a comparison between what happens. Now, you can decide for yourself whether you like the uh, simulated piano sound or not. Um, 
I think they're actually quite nice when you actually add a little bit of reverb. But as usual, all of these sounds are exactly as they come. So there's no processing, uh, there is no treatment, um, there's just a left and right from the two pairs that we're using close to the piano. And we've of course got the Blumland stereo pair that we're using for the distant one. Uh, the piano tech simulation, of course, is a stereo simulation, so it does have a bit of left and a bit of right, but it's pre-mixed for you. Uh, there's no reverb added, it's uh, as the simulation is. All of these are a little bit too dry and really could do with some artificial reverb adding. Um, a hazard of recording a grand piano in a space. In the section at the end, I've also put the microphone for an experiment underneath the soundboard, underneath the piano. Now, that would normally be uh, a no-no. You don't do that. If you read anything about recording grand pianos, you will always be told you don't put a microphone underneath the soundboard of a piano because it sounds horrible. Well, I've done it just so you can have a quick listen at the end. And what I do, I asked Grant if he could play the piece one more time and I handheld the Neumann 103 and I moved the 103 about while he was playing so it's changing position from moment to moment you can see in the video where it is and you can see the sound that you can hear um, you'll also see me dip down and hold it underneath now there's not as big a difference as you think it gets a little bit darker it gets a bit more um, warm sounding and some of the definition disappears. But it's actually not a bad technique. Uh, I've never tried it, but I wonder if a microphone underneath paired with a microphone up on top could actually be a valid thing to try. I don't know. Uh, it's, it was a thing that I just decided to do on the spur of the moment to see what it would sound like. So that's what I did. So here are the sections that we recorded this morning so you can have a listen and see what you think between them.
Well, there we go. That's the experiment over. You've heard the sound of the cheaper microphones, the sound of the more expensive microphones, the sound of a Blumland stereo in an ordinary living room in a house. And we've done some experiments with mic positions. And I'm pretty certain that the results of that moving microphone sequence uh, were a little bit different than you expected. Uh, they were certainly different from what I expected. I really didn't uh, imagine it would sound like that but it's given me some sort of food for thought. So that's the end of our comparisons between the different mic positions on Grant's Grand Piano. I'd like to say thanks to Grant for like playing the same piece over and over this morning. It was most appreciated and hopefully we'll do some more piano tests again. If you liked it, click the subscribe button and we'll see you again on the next video. Take care, bye. <laughs>